things here. Storm guard would be useful. So this is what they call a mid layer. A lot of people pay some okay money for that. Welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone's well and I hope everyone's been having the amazing weather that we've had here in, well, at least the southeast of England for the start of June. Almost every day has been incredible, so amazing for biking. I've got a couple of new parcels that have arrived, so I'll do a little unboxing and show you what they are. Not absolutely perfect, at least one of them, for the type of weather we've been having, but it's the type of thing, especially in England, it's always useful to, well, to have and to carry, especially if you're doing long trips when the weather's so unpredictable. But here we go, I'll show you what I've got, and uh, we'll see, maybe even go out for a little ride later. We'll start with a very exciting looking box. So, sorry, just dust everywhere. Okay, a few different things here. Storm guard, I'll just put that closer to the camera. That is waterproof over trousers from Triumph. So that's that. And then waterproof over gloves from Triumph. And you may think, it's too hot in the summer to think about that, but the amount of times I've done summer riding in the UK and you get caught out, these are amazing things to have. And that is a waterproof over jacket. And all of this stuff just goes straight over your normal biking gear. And that's a base layer as well. That really is for more winter rides, but I've never actually had that. I'll still open it and show you what it is. So, we'll start with, let's start with the jackets because, this jacket, I think, okay, first of all, let, let me start with that. This is hugely useful. So all of these things here, whether it's the gloves, trousers, or the jacket, they all come in a bag and it's labeled. I mean, that's just simple, but it makes it so easy. This is the type of stuff you go on a ride, chuck it in the bottom of the bag and you know exactly what you're undoing. And when you open this, I do know that this has a clever pocket. So here's the bag, pull it out. I love this stuff and the bag just turns into a pocket on the back. It's brilliant. There's the jacket, there's the pocket on the back. I'll show you how this looks actually, because this, and I tried it on a biking jacket, it does work very well. So this is medium to large, I'm six foot one, but easily on my biggest biking jacket, no issue at all putting this over the top. just a great thing to have. Great thing to always own some waterproofs. I actually always, on any, any ride over about an hour, I always carry waterproofs with me because I'd say as well as a phone mount like Quadlock and the Hepcom Becca Panniers, it's a game changing bit of kit that saved me so many times. And then over gloves from Triumph, which is great. This, this is called on there, that's visor wipe. So you can actually wipe your visor with this material on the inside of the fingers. That's brilliant. And again, they're designed to go over the gloves so they're nice and big. Brilliant. And finally, from the waterproof stuff. See, all labeled. I mean, that will just fit into any bag so well. These will be the trousers. And the last waterproofs I had, and I've still got them, I've had them 10 years. So this is the type of stuff that basically lasts a lifetime. The reason I prefer these, it's not a zip on the bottom. I always catch my zip. That's just Velcro at the bottom, do it up. I've just tried it yesterday and it works brilliantly. Oh, and the design, front and back, super slick. And base layers, who would, who would find this useful now? Who in the world has their winter when we have summer in the UK? Australians? Do you get cold weather in Australia? I don't know if you do. If anywhere in Australia you get cold weather, this will be useful, because this is what they call a mid-layer. And I'm just learning here, I'll be honest, I had no idea until 24 hours ago what a mid-layer is, and I've never owned one, so, Anything I'm saying now, don't take it from me. 
with a huge amount of weight. But the mid layer basically blocks out all of the wind, so complete wind protection. And the zip's designed like that, so it doesn't coincide with your normal jacket zip to protect from further from wind. So that's that, and that just goes straight under your jacket. And that's the Triumph gear. I'll probably have this gear for life. It's the type of gear that you always have, always put in your bag, lasts forever. Very happy with that. And this, this arrived literally five minutes before we started filming. It's from Throttle Snake, which is a German company, and I wear their stuff a huge amount. Their gloves and shoe protector. See that, I don't know if you can see it, but that now is customs declarations, basically. Now we've left the EU, there's about 10 times as much paperwork. So, I'll read that later. Little letter, and I love the way they package these. So this feels like, although I don't know for sure, I think that's two pairs of gloves and some protector for the gear as well. And I actually, I cannot remember what, what gloves they were, but I love the gear. It's always stealth and casual and super vintage style. Oh, I love these. Wow. I mean, just look at that for styling, so vintage. They could be from about 50 years ago. Velcro strap, as minimal as you like. So that's one pair. I'll just see if it's got the, the actual model name on it so I can tell you that. I'll write it in the description. And then the second lot. Wow. Beautiful gloves. So that one's got a buckle there. And let me put, oh, ooh, look at that lining. Wow. Okay, here we go. What size have I got? I think I've gone, yeah, I've gone for large. Oh, they're very, very nice. Very nice quality. Beautiful, the quilted bit there. Extra reinforcement here. And that's got reinforcement in the knuckles, that one as well, but super, super comfortable. And I've, do you know, I've always been, excuse me one second, there we go. I've always been a big fan of yellow gloves. I think they look brilliant, especially in the summer. So I'm delighted to have another pair of these. And they're, they're usually pretty thin, the throttle snake gloves, so very nice for summer rides. Oh, that's a special pair though. Delighted with those. Right, let, let's make the most of it. Let's go out on a little ride, grab a coffee somewhere in London, and well, I'm like a child. You know when you get some new gear, you just want to go out and try it on. So I'll take some of these with me. Yeah, let's go and enjoy it.
I do have some first editions. And that's 450. And that is uh, first edition. First edition. Okay, so that is hugely exciting, at least in my mind, because they actually do have some first edition. So I asked the man, do you have any James Bond? And he pointed some five pound ones. And then I saw behind the counter, they've got four first editions. I think from Russia with Love, Diamonds Are Forever, and a couple of others. First editions, all beautifully wrapped and presented. 450 pounds, may come back here. So if you're into some James Bond originals, the bookshop in Blackheath is the place it's really special to see some first editions though. Is it just me that gets excited about that? For me, that's a really, really big deal. So those books were actually published in 1957. That is probably six years, seven years before the first ever James Bond film came out. So no one had any idea it would be the gigantic global success it was. So those books, they are so special. And I'll stop going on about it now, but really that, that's a bit of history there. been taxed in seven years. That is perfect for a project. There'll be a lot of people who pay some okay money for that. I love riding around this part or any part of London actually because you get so many different interesting vehicles. That BMW just down a back alleyway, just down a side alley, right in between some bins. And it hadn't been taxed in seven years. I'd love to know the story behind that. Here for the day, we'll do bottom to top. So, the Falco Aviator boots, brilliant, these with zips on either side and very comfortable. And the jeans, I think these are just about one of the best, the best buys you can get because these are 130 pounds. They are the RST X Kevlar jeans. Brilliant fit, look really good. And for 130 pounds, they're some of the best value jeans on the market. They also wash really well. Jacket. I was actually going to do summer riding jackets this vlog, but I completely forgot, so I'll try and do that in one of the next few. But this is the worker overshirt from Revit, and this is a really good summer riding jacket. It's got to be about 25 degrees today, and it's really nice and cool, thin material. So this is one of the best summer jackets that I have probably. It's got, uh, it's got armor or pockets, for back armor, elbow, shoulders, everywhere. And a few nice touches like that. That's just magnetized. And it closes like that. Those little things make it really useful in lots of pockets, so really like this jacket. And I'll get the helmet. 
this is the Daytona low profile helmet and the reason it's low profile is because it's DOT approved so DOT approved is not European standard so basically it's more stringent the European standards for EC and this is not approved so I don't want to sell this too much because it doesn't score as well in safety tests as the ECE approved so I've been told but it's a good looking helmet and great value if you do look at open face helmets Monica usually wears that Garibaldi one but if you if you do look at them a warning the first time I got an open face the here, oh actually Monica's given a good example so I'll compare now two large helmets one is ECE European approved and one is American DOT approved so I tell you what, let's start with this so this is the difference in shell sizes And I'll take the visor off as well. Okay, that is what a large ECE approved helmet looks like. That's pretty much the slimmest profile helmet I've found for European standards. I wish I could see myself in the mirror just to compare, but there you go, okay? Side view, front view. Now, this is what an American DOT approved helmet looks like. I'm actually gonna to have to trust Monica here. Can you see the difference? Yeah. yeah. So that's the difference. It's just a way, way slimmer profile and you can feel it as well. You can feel it's a slimmer profile. So that's the difference, but it's not a strict safety standard. So that's the downside to it. But if you buy an open face helmet, I remember last year I made the mistake thinking, oh wow, I've got an open face helmet. Jump onto the motorway for a two hour ride and after two minutes I was in absolute hell because you don't realize how many stones and bits of debris fly up at your face and the whole bottom half of my face was absolutely filthy so if you're doing long rides in open face put a bandana or something over there are a few bits that I've been meaning to do to the Bonneville for a while so the ends of the grips I cut off for bar end mirrors and then I got rid of them so I need to get a couple more of those and the mirrors, the visibility is atrocious. So I need to get some mirror extenders, which I didn't realize, but it is actually a thing. So I'll let you know if that actually works because at the moment, all I see is my shoulder when I'm trying to look in the mirrors. This is an original Triumph King and Queen seat. And a lot of people ask me how comfortable it is. It really is as comfortable as the most comfortable Harley Davidson. It's incredible. Original Triumph one, and I have checked, they still actually sell these for the new model Bonneville. So you can still buy these. I know they're a bit of a Marmite thing. Some people think they look ridiculous and some people like me absolutely love them. But that is, that's the exact side profile of it. I, I really, really love it. It's such a nice seat all day. You could be riding eight hours a day and you still feel fresh as a daisy after it. Sunglasses from Ethan, designed for extreme sports. So bendy everywhere. You can bash them about, sit on them, and they're tough, really tough. And that's it for this episode. I seriously am tempted to go back and get that first edition James Bond. I don't know, I need to think about that. But thank you so much for watching. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.